And this brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. Did you know that in the Old Testament, the ark that Noah built was a picture of Jesus Christ coming to the earth? It was a picture of the earth today being where it is. The great flood today is the flood of evil. Everywhere you turn, it's evil. Evil, 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 evil. Well, the blood of Jesus Christ was shed 2,000 years ago for us to use today. How do we use it? Well, we say, God, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. And when he does, that blood of Christ is applied to our soul. And our soul is before the throne of God at that second. And we, we appear before God, and He is. we are in His access then. We, are, uh, we have access to Him, and He has access to us after that. Well, back in the flood days, uh, the New Testament is the account of how God is, how His grace dealt with Noah and His people. Eight people God's grace dealt with. His grace was given... To the whole world. For 125 years. As Noah built that ark. He preached. And he preached. And he preached. And he preached for 125 years. And nobody listened. They didn't want God's grace. They wanted to live in the world they lived in. Doing the uh, dastardly deeds. And the horrible things they were doing. That's what they wanted. And they stayed in it. Well. When the flood came. All but eight people drowned and were killed now let me tell you this the earth was covered all the way around the earth it was covered with people it was 1656 years after creation when the flood took place and the earth was completely covered in that day there were uh, people that had uh, wives after wives after wives and made children after children after children and they spread across this earth like wildfire and they they and they were but what does the church deal with the church deals with christians and sinners many many people that walk into the church they walk in a sinner and they can walk out a saint if they'll ask jesus to give them that sin now noah was to cover both both the inside and the outside of the ark with pitch. Now this is the picture of the blood of Jesus Christ. The Hebrew word here, translated pitch, is kapar. And uh, P-H, kapar. In the almost every other instant in the Old Testament now, we find kapar is translated as the word atonement. Now what that pitch was, it was atonement for the ark to keep the world out, the water out, to keep everything out that would have came in to the, uh, flood the ark and make the ark sink. Or, or might not sink because it was built with shittim wood. And I don't know, shittim wood is probably one of the heaviest woods, I understand. And I may be wrong there, I don't know. I need to really dig into that before I explain it. But in Exodus uh, 30 and 10, it says to atone is to cover with blood. Now, you know, in Exodus was when the temple worship was taking place. And the only way they could worship God and come before God is they had to sacrifice an animal. Well, animal sacrifice was done away with at the cross. Jesus did away with animal sacrifice at the cross. It's no longer necessary the blood that he shed on the cross covered everything from that day forward. So here we are now. The ark is pitched and uh, from the flood and the judgment, just like the blood of Christ protects the believer from the sin and judgment. Thus far we may note the following Old Testament types. Enoch is a type of the church being saved from the flood and judgment and the church will not go through the great tribulation now Enoch was a man that was a man after God's own heart 
Now, before the flood, this, this Enoch man that preached, this Enoch man that was one of God's men, God took him to heaven. Took him to heaven by the, uh, the hand of God. He went to heaven by the hand of God. If I just put Enoch in the wrong place, those of you who are watching PH Tidbits, who are Bible scholars, you put him in the right place. And so, uh, but anyway, he was translated to heaven. Noah gathered uh, a male and a female of all the earth's animals of the unclean kind. But of the clean kind, he gathered seven pairs of clean animals each as the ox and the lamb and along with his wife his three sons and their wives at the uh, command of God and he boarded the ark how did he get all of those animals from around the earth to come to that location the hand of God did that Noah, you know, still had one of the things that man doesn't have in this day. He had command of the animals. And he could command the animals. Uh, Genesis 7 and 1 is the first to record the word come in in the Bible. God said to Noah in the ark, come in. In. Where was God? He came in the ark and told Noah to come in the ark. So who did do the commanding of the animals? Why God did. He did it though through Noah. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all the house into the ark. The final reference to this word is the spirit and the bride say, Come and let him that heareth say come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him come and take of the water of life freely Revelation 22 17 one of the last bastions in the Bible is God saying come come in come now I'm saying to you come if you don't come, then you are in trouble. You're going to die and go to hell. So we must come to God. God remembered Noah. Now you see there was a period of time during uh, before the flood that, that God had kind of left man to himself for a while. Because God doesn't live in time, so time didn't matter. But it had been 1,656 years since God took a real good look what was going on. So he allowed man to continue uh, in his own self to see how it was going to work out. Well, mankind failed. We all failed, and we all have failed in this day and in this age. And so, because we've all failed here, and during the flood, as later, we remember, uh, remember though that he remembered Sodom and Gomorrah, a lot in Sodom. He, he looked down at another time on the earth before, and he looked down at Lot in Sodom. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when they overthrow the cities in which Lot dwelt. And then we're going to look at a whole new picture. We're going to look at a nation called Israel. He was God, Israel was God's chosen people. Now we're going to see God's chosen people in Egypt. This is another type of place to where a flood had to take place, but the flood was different this time. We're going to read about that. 
And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Now remember, Abraham is the beginning of faith. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, those are the, the children of Abraham, and they were the, called the patriots. And they were the beginning, they were the start of a godly line of people that were going to build the tabernacle, were going to follow God, and that's what they were. I've also heard the groaning of the children of Israel. This is what God said. And uh, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered by covenant, Exodus 6 and 5. Do you remember when the children of Israel went into Egypt? There were some 70 souls went into Egypt. And in a period of 40 years, some 3 million uh, were were put together. There were some three million children were put together, children of Israel. And uh, so they, God dealt with them in a different way than he did anybody else. And um, it came, came to pass that, that uh, he said, I have heard the groaning of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians have in bondage. In Exodus 6 and 5. And then, this is like the thief on the cross. Listen to this. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And that's in Luke, in the New Testament. Luke um, uh, 23 and 42. Now, what he's saying here is this is a picture of the children of Israel in the, where they were, captive of Egypt. And this is a, a picture of people in the world, captives of sin, living in the world. And this man says, remember me. Now the flood passes and the ark rests upon Mount Ararat. And Noah is told by God to be faithful and to multiply. God's desire was to fill the earth again with people. And that's what he planned on doing upon the earth. 8 and 17, 9 and 1. Adam had once had similar words. In, uh, back in chapter 1 of the book Bible, in verse 28, uh, we see that Adam was told the same thing. But here, after the flood, they would subdue is left out Schofield writes the following thing about Genesis 1.28. Let's read what Schofield says. It says, this is the divine magna. Now, uh, magna uh, car, char, char, carta, okay, and for all true scientific and material process, man began with a mind that was perfect in its finite capacity for learning. Now, Adam had that perfect mind God gave him. But as years have gone by, the devil has taken the mind of man, taken the perfection out of the mind of man. Where is perfection in the mind of man? Man that serves God has a mind that can be perfected by God. Uh, you're looking at a man with an eighth grade education, yet has a degree from a college. How to get it? Got it by having the mind of God inside of this body. I accepted in 1972 at three o'clock in the morning, November 5th, I accepted Jesus Christ in my heart and I got a new mind. How did I, my mind run before that? Wild, wild, alcohol, drinking, lying, cheating, stealing, doing crazy things. And God brought me through to live to tell it. Wrecked so many vehicles you couldn't count them and, 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 and destroyed 
uh, probably destroyed some lives with my havoc raising. And God come down one night and said, hey, your number's up. I could use you to fight in my kingdom like you fight in this world. I fought in the world. I fought for the devil. And God said, hey, I could use a man like you to fight in the kingdom of God. <laughs> and he changed me. And from that day to this, I have fought in the kingdom of God. One of the first things I did the next Sunday, three days later after I got saved, I went down and, and, and asked, asked uh, 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 the preacher to baptize me with, with believer's baptism. I never said that before. It was the first time I ever said that. I didn't realize what that was. I'd been baptized two or three times. But I never got baptized with believer's baptism. I just got wet. This time I'm in it. And I got down there and baptized with believer's baptism. The finite capacity of learning. Perfect learning. Is learning the Bible the way it ought to be learned. And the way you do that is you get in the Bible, get in the books that teach the Bible. Uh, he commanded it to be subdued. To subdue something is to tell them the ultimate end of their life and how they can change it. And that will subdue their life and they will start a new life. At any age, uh, over the in material environment, being... It, uh, the element into the service of the race. Uh, in the New Schofield Bible, uh, we find that it said, But now Eden's sin and the flood and the judgment had so radically changed men's environment that he would find it quite impossible to fully subdue anything after the flood after everything was gone and now what you only thing you've got to subdue is the animals that come off the ark and your children and and bring it under it bring it them into the place you're bring see that's one thing we've left off today we've left off bringing our children to jesus christ we've left off training our children up to be christians ah Oh, this thing that you see today on TV about all these men uh, fooling around with women. And, and a man is, lives by his sight. And you've got these women running around half naked. They look like they're asking for a man to come and molest them. Because they, they, they're provoking a man to be aroused in his physical being toward that woman. And, and they go around here half-dressed and then they, then they uh, bring a man to court for, for looking at him or putting his hand on him. Uh, but this is the kind of world we live in today. A promiscuous world. Look, the verses in Genesis are, ought to be rightly understood. And how do you rightly understand? You have to explain them. Uh, they're, they're not really strange words in a sense. They're strange to today's people. Because today's people have followed the devil so much, they can't understand the words of God. But the words of God, it, it, it begins with, listen to Simon Peter. He came to Jesus concerning the needed payment. Uh of a certain tribute tax. And the Savior responded by uh, ordering his apostle to go down to the sea. So he went down through the sea and cast a hook in, take up a fish, and the first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. And that take it and give it them for me and thee. 
So the two of them were traveling together. They come into this town and the tax collector comes to them and says, before you can walk through this town and do your talking or your preaching, whatever you want to call it, you're going to have to pay a tax. So Jesus said, you go down there and you get that piece of money out of that mouth, fish's mouth. And you see how that money get in that fish's mouth? Well, that was easy. God made the fish, and God told the fish to pick that piece of money up from off from the floor of the, uh, the, the, the ocean and bring it over there to Peter. And Peter threw out the hook. I'll bet you a dollar to a donut. Peter took the money out and threw the fish back in the water. Uh, and take and give it unto them for me and thee. Matthew seventeen twenty seven. This miracle of... Uh, properly considered that demonstrates more clearly the Savior's perfect humanity. He was a perfect human being. He had perfect humanity. This, And then his deity is shown up as he tells Peter uh, this particular fish is going to bring you a coin. For, for Adam could have and possibly did experience the same power over both fish and fowl. Again, consider the divine command given to Adam. It said, be beautiful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion as the word. Dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. <coughs> and now this explains Adam telling the animals to come, two by two and, and those by sevens. Why did God need seven of every clean animal? Because when the animals were here and they were going to start multiplying, there had to be one extra one that Noah could sacrifice when he landed. When Noah, when Noah landed, he built, he built his house, and he, he got ready, and he got everything ready, and then God said, now it's time, Noah, for you to sacrifice. So Noah has to sacrifice to clean out. So out of those seven, he takes that extra one, and he sacrifices. And by that time, there are new ones being born. There are new animals being born. And God now establishes a rainbow covenant with Noah, and the covenant eliminates uh, as it falls, as the following. Listen to this. God would never again destroy the earth by, through, the, through a flood. And that is in chapter 8, 21, 22, chapter 9, 9 through 17. But the earth will be destroyed again. And this time through fire. See 2 Peter 3, 1 through 13. And look at it. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In which, which, listen to this. In which shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Wow. Hey, just in the last month or two, we've seen an example of how fire and wind get together and could rage across this earth. And there's not enough firemen in the whole earth to put the fire out if God sets it. If God wants it to burn, I don't care how many men you've got. Look how many thousands of acres. Bigger than a whole state. Because California is as big as three states. But bigger than a whole state has burned an area off over them. Uh, God would require the life of a man who murdered another man. That was in there. If a man kills a man, put him to death. And that, that was it. And then the order of the seasons of the nature and confirmed in 8 and 22. And then we see the fear of animals for men in prophecy 9 and 2. And the flesh of animals for men's diet is permitted. This is where man 
now is allowed to start eating meat and uh, the flesh of an animal. Uh, the tragedy following the flood is that Noah becomes drunken from his own vineyard and it expresses uh, him and exposes himself in his tent. This is a very difficult subject to deal with. You know back there in Sodom and Gomorrah there was sodomy and there was homosexuality and God destroyed that whole place, wiped it off the earth, never to be seen again or even be, be any trace of it left. None. Did away with it completely. Well, here's a man that uh, his son Ham, the grandson of Canaan, viewed the nakedness of Canaan, especially incurs the wrath of his grandfather for the part he played in this. See, genealogy is very, very important. Genealogy comes up and takes place. I raised six children. One of my children was adopted. This adopted child raised in the same house with all, went to Christian school, did everything the rest did, but has fallen into the world right now. And I talked with him the other day, and he's, he's trying to come back. But you know how hard it is to get out of a place to where you have fallen so far that you have got into dope and all kinds of things that are in the world today? It is very difficult to say, God, forgive me, I've sinned. This boy has asked the Lord to save him. Yet he's acting like the world, but he's in misery. He's got his family strewed out all over the place. He's got uh, uh, just, and why? His genes are different. His genealogy is different. Different than the other, the other five. And he's straight out. Noah predicts the future physical and spiritual life style of his three sons and their descendants. Now we're going to see why we have the descendants that we have and the people we have. Noah dies at the age of 950. The ultimate tragedy is his life may be seen by the fact that no spiritual accomplishment whatsoever are recorded during the final 350 years. He apparently experienced that thing so dreaded by Paul being set on a shelf by God. Meaning that God said to him, Hey, because of this sin you allowed between you and your son while you were naked, laying there naked, drunk, and your son did something to you that wasn't supposed to happen and brought back a reproach on this earth again in the people that were living on this earth. But I keep under my body, Paul said, and bring it into subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. 1 Corinthians 9 and 27. That's like my little old son. It's now 30-something years old and has been cast away from being able to do the godly things because of the manner of life he's living. He can come back and be, and, and he was he probably intelligent-wise, he was more intelligent in school and many things than some of my other children were. But intelligence won't give you smartness. Smartness comes from God, not from intelligence. The arrogancy of a man, a rebel named Nimrod, grandson of Ham. Now this is the boy that did the dastardly deed with his daddy. Uh, instigates a religious building program consisting of both an uh, 
an astronomical tower in the city on the plain of Sheer near Babylon. Now, this is the Tower of Babel. And listen to this. The judgment of God. God punishes the evil attempt separates mankind into small ethnic groups by confusing their once universal language into many dialects. Now, we know that back in Jesus' day, when Peter preached, there were 70 different dialects there that day. Well, those dialects are different groups of people that had dispersed from the Tower of Babel. And they were in different locations. And the origin of nations, the ancient world, is now settled by the descendants of Noah and his three sons. They have now settled in these places. Now there was Japheth in 10, 2 and 5. Some of his descendants and his people they found were to be Goma, that is the Germans, Magog, and Meshach, that is the Russians, uh, Media, that is uh, Persia, uh, Javan, that was Greece, uh, Taurus, that is Italy, uh, Tegama, that is Armenia, uh, Tarshish, that is Spain, and Kittim, and that is uh, Cyrus, uh, Cyphus, Cyrus, the descendants of Ham. Descendants of Ham now, some of his descendants and people they found would be in Ethiopia and uh, uh, Mizram, Egypt, and Put, Africa, and Canaan, the Canaanites, that's in Palestine, Nimrod, the Bamla, Assyria, and Sidon is uh, now Pontius, like Pontius Galatia, and Heth is the Hittites, and Jabez and are uh, the Jabezites and of, of the Jerusalem period that was during David's reign and then we see uh, 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 Palestine was the Palestinians and then we see uh, Sin possible the founder of the Orient people in China, Japan and India the descendants of Shem are these through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the nation of Israel. Uh, though Abraham, Ishmael, and Esau in the Middle East and the Arab countries. I've got to hurry to get through this. Anthropologist Arthur Custance uh, uh, writes, and thus we conclude that from the family of Noah have sprung all the people of the world, uh, prehistoric and historic. The events descended in the connection with Genesis 6 and 10, and particularly the pro prophetic statement of Noah himself in Genesis 9, 25 and 28 with respect to the future of his sons. Shem, Ham, and Japheth together combined to prove to us with the most uh, reasonable account of the early history of mankind, a history which relates understood does not at all require us to believe that modern man began with an ape. Uh, and the only research a civilized state after a long uh, evolutionary history but made a fresh start in a single family who carried with them uh, an <clears throat> unpopulated earth, accumulated a heritage of pure pre-flood people. In the summary, then, what we have endowed, it shows us that the uh, paper may be set forth briefly as follows. The geographic distribution of fossil remains is such as they are mostly located explains by the treating term 
of the uh, marginal representatives of the widespread and in part focused dispensation of people from a single multiplied population multiplying population established at a point more or less central of them all who were sent successful wise of merchants each wa each wave waves of merchants each wave driving the previous one further toward the uh, population of propriety of the earth. The most degrading spectrum are representatives of these general movements who were driven into the last hospital, hospitable areas where they suffered physical degeneration as a consequence of circumstance in which they were forced to live. I tell you what, people that live in the big inner city in the United States of America are forced to live under battle conditions today and bewildered and, and, and can't, can't imagine. And I, I see uh, people say, I, I need to move, I need to get out of this complex I'm in, but I had to sign a five-year lease. And they won't let me out of it. And they can bleed me to death. If I move out of it, I can still have to pay for five whole years, this lease, whether I'm living in the place or not. Uh, I tell you what, we're living in a tough, tough, tough day today. It's a tough day for people today. People who have not drawn close to God and found the uh, place of where they can be out of debt and out of the place. God has made it where this little old man you're looking at that has very little education, but God made me know enough to know that I, I can't afford to owe anybody. The house I'm sitting in is paid for. I built it with my own two hands, every inch of it. My family, my boys helped me. We built every inch of it. And it's here, uh, and it's paid for as we built. We paid for it and built, paid and built, paid and built, paid and built, paid and built. It took us 13 years. Well, 13 years. And, and I, now I don't have to. If I owed somebody, I wouldn't own the house anymore because uh, they'd take it. And so uh, I'm at a place in life now where money is scarce. Money is little. I just this little bitty... Uh, what I get, the little Social Security I get, is not enough to live on. If I had a house payment, I couldn't make it. If I had a car payment, I couldn't make it. If I had any more payments than just taking care of that, what, this, what it costs just to keep the house up, I couldn't make it. So therefore, God has got me in a place where He can use me because I'm not burdened down by a uh, covered up by, and i got to get through this here quick, all right. Let's look at the final. This is the eighth thing out of eight things. The final, this. Thesis is strengthened by the evidence of history which shows that migration has always tended to follow this pattern. It has frequently been accomplished by instance in degeneration, both in individuals or whole tribes, and usually results in establishment of a general pattern of culture relationships which are parallel to those that archaeologists has since revealed from antiquity. Now we're going to see this group of people. Let's use our own country. I'm in America. We are at the door right now 
of America destroying itself from inside. Not from Russia, not from Germany, not from any other country, but from inside. What happens? What do we call that? We call that imploding. We are going to implode. We're going to collapse from the inside. <clears throat> Why? Because of degradation. Because of uh, people that have gone berserk. Our prisons are slapped full to the doors to where police say, if I go out and bring in 40 people tonight, where are you going to put them? They say, we don't have any place to put them. Please don't bring any more than you absolutely have to bring. So all of those who aren't brought are going to continue the life they live and they're going to, they're going to get to the place where they're shooting each other and murdering and killing and robbing, walking into people's houses, killing the people in their house. Uh, <clears throat> I live next to one of the largest cities in the United States, Atlanta, Georgia, and the murder rate there is so horrendous that if they were to get on the news on, on any given morning and start reading the obituary just from the night before, it would take the whole newscast. And, and, and uh, I just now heard that, that they consider Atlanta a place where people uh, put people in a trunk and they bring them up and they roll them off in the streets of Atlanta. Dead people. They could come from Cincinnati, Ohio, or anywhere else. And just dump them off in Atlanta where they no clothes on or nothing. Here's a naked body. How are you going to find out who it is, where it came from, and all of the, the things about it? And, and so they made Atlanta the dumping ground for bodies. And, and so here we are living in this culture today that's going to self-destroy itself. It's going to implode, collapse from the inside out. The corruption in the city hall is well known by everybody. And there's seemingly are not enough honest people in the city hall to try to correct it. Because everybody's getting a little penny or two, penny or two, penny or two, money corruption. Now, when you get away from God, you're going downhill. And that's the problem today. America is headed down the tube. I believe the handle's been pushed on the flush, and America is now in the swirl. It won't be long and it'll go and it will be destroyed from within and we're going to be run by another country. We'll be taken over and when we get taken over it's going to be tough. It's already tough but we'll be taken over by a ruthless country will take us over. It doesn't have to be a big country. It could be a little country. I just got done reading. After 1656 years, it started over again. And it wasn't but just a few years, a couple hundred years, and the earth was back again in total sin, total debauchery, leaving God out. In total, there was one little group called Israelites that were following God. All the rest of the earth was following Satan and had chosen not to follow God. And that's where America is today. America has chosen not to follow God. Remember now, all you have to do is say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. I recommend then you find a good Bible-believing church. I happen to go to a Baptist church. One that uses nothing but this King James Version. The King James Version of the Bible. Uh, it, that's the, the one that God ordained. You say, why? Because from 1611 until today, it has been the truth. It has been the Bible that is correct. It has been the Bible when you can read a verse, pray about it, and end up with a house like this that you own. 
because you did it in a godly manner. You did it according to what this book said. According to what this book said. And then you can live the life that I'm living right now according to this book. That I'm living now according to the book. If you follow what the book says, you'll be the smartest person on earth. The smartest person on earth is the person that does what God says do. That's the one that's, that's smart. If you, you, you try anything else but what God says, and you come to an end that you don't want to be in. And you'll be in that system of uh, next door to murder every day. To somebody murdering you. If you hadn't got but a dime. Uh, they, today people will murder you for this little old ring right here. It's probably worth about 30 cents. And they'll murder you for it to get a drink of liquor. Or a, or a, a piece of dope. And take it down there and leave your body destitute. They'll take your glasses. They'll take your necktie and your shirt and your pants. And leave a naked body laying there. You naked laying there. And they go pawn everything that you, you had on you. Or what, put it on themselves and wear it. That's the world we're living in today. Listen, you need to get close to God. You need to get to where the protection is. Stay where it is. And stay out of harm's way. And that's what God said to do. Well, this is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. We'll see you next time. We've ran way over the, the 30 minute. We're at 46 minutes. We're 16 minutes over our time. But I think it was necessary to do that on this particular excerpt. And so we did it. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.